Hey plebs, today we'll discuss one of the worst barbarian races ever to plague the earth, a group of merchants who migrated from the Levant many years ago, deceitfully manipulating others to further their greedy interests. You know who I'm talking about. Punics. They were led by a Fasalocracy in Carthage, coming to dominate the seas with barbarian mercenaries. Where we left off, Rome had recently liberated Italy from its own barbarians. No one saw this contrast better than the gods, whom sought to give Rome a proper challenge. It all started in Italy, where a group of Italians went to civilize the local Greeks. Encountering huge resistance, the Italians accepted help from Carthage, a mistake they quickly realized, calling for Rome for help. The Punics were led by Hanno and Gisco, whose strategy to blockade Sicily was quickly foiled as the Romans reached the island, scaring the Greeks into sub mission and laying siege to Agrigentum. The Punics cowardly fled to the sea before the city fell. Lucky for them, the Romans didn't have a navy, knowing well that seafaring was for pussies. But to win the war, the Romans analyzed the shipwrecked Punic ship, using it as an example of how not to build a ship, and then made 120 of their own in under two months. The fleet was commanded by the consul Scipio Asina, the son of Barbatus, but he didn't last long though, as he went to meet with possible allies near Sicily, being betrayed and imprisoned in an ambush by Gisco. To avenge him, the consul Caius Dullius assumed leadership of the fleet, seeing the implementation of the Corvus, a brilliant shipboarding mechanism that transformed pussy sea conflict into true battles. Dullius went to confront Gisco's fleet at Milai, avoiding all the ramming attempts, boarding tens of ships and scattering their forces, followed by Dullius getting a triumph and Gisco getting killed by his men. Following it, the Romans pushed further and further into Sicily. Now having taken the initiative, the two Roman consuls, Volso and Regulus, built 330 ships to invade Africa. On their way, they met with a Carthaginian ship of 350 ships at Cape Economus led by Hamilcar Barca. His strategy was to make the center weak and flank strong, making it retreat and lure the Romans away as he flanked the rear. But then the Romans broke through it and then returned back and crushed the Punic flankers. With this victory, the Romans launched their invasion of Africa. Freaking out, the Punics hired a Spartan general, whom possessed ancient Trojan strategies with him, defeating and imprisoning Regulus. Rome then sent a rescue mission for the army, but the gods denied their efforts, launching a storm and killing them all. With this, Carthage was able to retake Agrigentum, burning it to the ground, to quench their bloodlust. But the Romans refused to give up, building another 220 ships, only for the gods to also destroy it. After many attempts, the Romans tried sieging Lilibeum again, all while getting harassed by Hannibal, and another fleet was being destroyed in a storm. Fucking hell. But then Hanno II took power in Carthage, who was so frightened by the Roman perseverance that he demobilized the Punic fleet. With the storms having drained all of the treasury, the patriotic patrician families of Rome donated all their money to build yet another fleet, going on to destroy the Punic fleet at Agades, and winning the war. The peace treaty involved the Roman annexation of Sicily, along with heavy reparations, throwing Carthage into a civil war against its own mercenaries. Rome agreed to help, in exchange for Corsica and Sardinia, later on focusing on the northern Gauls who had allied with Carthage in the war. But the gods were very unimpressed with Carthage. After all those storms, they still lost. They saw another chance after Hamilcar won the civil war for Carthage. After he sailed for Hispania, he had one of his sons, Hannibal, swear to one day destroy Roman civilization. At this very moment, the gods buffed all of Hannibal stats, including his intelligence and his lust for blood. Years later, Hamilcar would be killed by the Iberians, succeeded by his son-in-law, whom signed a treaty with Rome promising not to cross the Ebro River. Then he was killed by a slave, leaving his position to Hannibal, whom would expand their dominions through Iberia. In his way laid Sagentum, a Greek city under Roman protection. It was beyond the Ebro River, but he attacked it anyway, all while the Romans were busy fighting the Illyrians, starting the second war he so wanted. To start the war, Hannibal assembled 100,000 men, including some Numidian cavalry, marching it through Gaul by either bribing or killing the Gauls who stood in his path. Landing on Massalia to stop him was the consul of the year, Publius Cornelius Scipio, the son of Asina, whom failed to catch Hannibal in time. When blocked by the Alps, Hannibal literally marched through it with his war elephant, on winter, the absolute madman. When he got to the other side, he had lost three-fourths of his army, most of his elephants, and all his siege weapons. Truly a madman. Soon after, he had a skirmish with Publius Scipio, whom almost died, were it not for his soon-to-be-relevant son. As they returned to their camps, Scipio met with his co-consul Longus, a reckless pleb, whom Publius advised not to attack Hannibal. He did just that, getting flanked and killed by the Numidians at the Trebia River. Meanwhile, Neus Scipio, Publius Scipio's brother, was busy tying up the Punic forces at Hispania, led by Hannibal's brother, Hasdrubal. Back in Italy, Hannibal was almost encircled by the new consuls Flaminius and Geminus, but the madman crossed the swamp to evade them, carving his eye out and marching his army between a cliff and the Lake Trasimene, which Flavius, another pleb, despite being advised against it, attacked head-on, getting ambushed and killed. Due to 
yet another plebeian consul fucking things up, the Romans agreed to elect Fabius Maximus as dictator, the grandson of Rullianus himself. The core of his strategy is known to us today as Fabian Tactics, or 4D Chess, where one transcends the need to fight any battles at all. Instead, Fabian would patiently wait until Hannibal brought his own doom upon himself. Hannibal tried to convert the Italians to join his side, but most of Italy had already been civilized, save for the north and south, that is, where he found most of his support. However, unable to think four-dimensionally, the plebs elected Minicius as co-dictator. He attacked Hannibal head-on, got absolutely fucked and returned to Rome, renouncing his co-dictatorship. But the plebs refused to learn their lesson, for just after Fabian's term as dictator ended, they elected Gaius Varro as consul, another warmongering pleb. He raised 16 legions to fight Hannibal head-on, at where you ask? At Cannae. <sighs> Just saying this name gets me so depressed. Once they arrived, Paulus, that is Varro's patrician co-consul, advised against attacking, but Varro ignored him, charging at Hannibal. Place your bets, everybody. He started the battle by charging in, pushing the Punic center away, only to be flanked by the Numidians and completely surrounded, getting slaughtered for the whole day. 86,000 Romans died that day, the greatest defeat in Roman history so far, among the dead being Municius, Geminus, and Paulus. And no, Varro didn't die, instead he fled the battle like a bitch. With with Rome's armies and leadership destroyed, the Punic demons spread their chaotic terror through Italy, flipping many treacherous cities to their side, among them Syracuse. To punish them, the Senate sent Consul Marcellus to lay siege to Syracuse, a man famous for killing a Gallic chieftain with his bare hands. At this time, Syracuse was home to Archimedes, a Greek thief who had stolen many Trojan manuscripts, using them to build many weapons. Despite these hurdles, Marcellus eventually breached the city, and when a Roman soldier found Archimedes' home, he accidentally stepped over the circles he was drawing like the artist he was forcing the soldier to stab him until he shut the fuck up. Can you believe the modern mathematicians actually worship this Greekoid? Now, back to the bad news, both Scipio brothers, Publius and Naeus, had been killed by Hasdrubal in Iberia. But remember, we still have Publius Scipio's son. Yeah, he actually managed to survive Cannae, returning to Rome and getting elected as consul for his promise to conquer Iberia for Rome. He headed straight for Cartagena, taking it with just 500 men in a brilliant night attack. Not only that, but proceeding to obliterate Hasdrubal in battle, forcing him to flee to Italy, and then crushing the remaining Punic forces by pulling the same trick Hannibal did in Cannae. Now, back in Italy, the situation was still dire, as both consuls, Marcellus and Crispinus, were ambushed and killed by the Numidian cavalry, followed by the arrival of Hasdrubal in the north. To prevent the Punic brothers from joining up, the Romans sent their southern legions to march 300 miles north in just a week, linking with the northern legions and attacking Hasdrubal by surprise, destroying him and all his forces. Hearing of the victory in Italy, Scipio focused on taking the fight to Africa, but instead of requesting the Senate for legions, he sailed to Italy, using nothing but his charisma to gather 30 warships and 7,000 volunteer legionnaires, then simply asking and getting permission from the Senate to invade. When Scipio landed in Africa, he found the Numidians in a civil war, then took the pretender's side and helped set fire to the local Punic army camp, scaring their forces out and then slaughtering them all in the field, winning the civil war and making Numidia a Roman ally. Now scared shitless of Scipio, Carthage recalled Hannibal to defend Africa, and thus finally freeing Italy from his reign of terror. It would all be decided in the fields of Zema, as Hannibal and Scipio faced against each other. At the day of the battle, both sides deployed their armies in three lines, but instead of the maniple formation, Scipio had them directly aligned, with Velite skirmishes in the gaps. Hannibal started the battle with an elephant charge. They either crashed into his own troops or were easily killed by the Romans. The Numidians took this chance to rout the Punic cavalry, while both armies advanced, with the Hastati clashing with the mercenaries, winning the upper hand until the Punic recruits got to them. The Principes came to the rescue, but the Punic veterans were still intact. To finish the battle, Scipio had his Hastati Study and Principes form at the center, and the Triari at the wings. The armies met in a furious brawl, indecisive for either side, until the Numidian cavalry returned, flanking the Punics until Hannibal fled the field, and the Romans claimed victory. After so many sacrifices and hundreds of thousands of dead Romans, they had emerged victorious once more. Scipio was gracious in victory, demanding only the annexation of Iberia, the independence of Numidia, some more reparations, and the agreement Carthage would never again conduct foreign policy without Rome's wise counsel. After that, Scipio Scipio went to Rome, had a glorious triumph and gained the epithet Africanus, restoring peace at last. Oh, who am I kidding? Here comes the best part. So after the Second Punic War was won, Rome was embroiled in a series of wars against the Greeks. Spoiler warning, Rome wins and the Greeks are blown the fuck out. Huge surprise, I know, but stick with me. During all this time, Cato the Elder was in the Senate, whom held an indescribable hatred towards Punics. Every single time he talked about anything, he would end it with Carthago de Lenda Est, that is, Carthage must be destroyed. Since he was a young senator, since he was a child, hell, since he was an unborn fetus, all he wished for was to have Carthage destroyed. 
destroyed. His chance would come 50 years later after the Battle of Zema, when Carthage illegally fielded an army to fight the Numidians over a border dispute. Now utterly convinced by Cato, Rome sent an ultimatum ordering it to destroy their city, move it several miles further inland and provide 500 children to Rome to see if Punix had any capacity whatsoever to be civilized from a young enough age. They refused those terms and called for war. In response, Rome sent 80,000 men to siege the city, stalled for around two years and then got Scipio Aemilianus, that is Scipio's Africanus' son, to lead the siege and finally breach the city. The legions rounded up the 50,000 survivors to serve as slaves, letting the city burn for 17 days and let's not forget. Feels fucking good. After Carthage's complete destruction, the Romans annexed their now salty lands as the new masters of the Western Mediterranean, and at the peak of the Republican era. A glorious sight indeed. Join me next time when the plebs continue to deteriorate the Republic. Should be in two weeks or so. I'll see you then. Ciao ciao.